hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Sarasota, Florida, on the Next Gen Network's coverage of the club championships. I am Topher Davis, here with my partner, Jackson Kelsey. Hello, Ultimate World. I'd like to give a thanks to Elemental Technologies for encoding this game. Today we have Atlanta, Georgia's Chain taking on Seattle Sockeyes. Er, yeah, Seattle Sockeye. An exciting match between the three seed Sockeye and the six seed Chain. This is the C pool of the tournament. Every team in this pool is one and one going into this round, which means if you win, you are on to the power pools. If you lose, you drop down to the bottom pools. You get a much tougher road to bracket play. Yeah, both teams dropping their first game. Chain Lightning losing to GOAT. And Seattle Sockeye losing to Sub-Zero. Sub-Zero, that's right. Talking with both teams before, uh, Chain felt like it was really the first time that they've had this whole group of team of guys together playing together this whole season. And so it just they were kind of working out some kinks in that first game. Uh, in the second game, they played Sub-Zero, and they took half 8-2 and never really looked back. Um, so they were really down on their offense the first game, but they really picked it up in that second game. Different story for Sakai. Of course, they're miss missing their biggest deep threat next-gen player, all-star athlete Matt Rader. Broke his arm at Northwest Regionals, so he will not be playing at all this tournament. Uh, Sakai felt like they lost that first game against Sub-Zero. Uh, they just kind of threw it away. The D was getting breaks, but their O was trying to force it into small windows, uh, trying to really, really force their throws. And then their second game against Goat, it got so windy that it was really just a game of field position. And they just felt like they were in the right place at the right time and were able to win that game. So this game will be for a power pool position. Chain Lightning starting on defense. Byron Liu, Jake Spear, Frank Wooten, And the pull is off. Danny Karlinski with the disc immediately going to Phil Murray. Phil Murray running it out. And what speed. That's efficient offense right there. Takes down a pull, finds Karlinski on the sideline. Karlinski sees that Murray's going deep. Phil Murray, one of the most exciting players to watch. Byron Liu, just kind of let that one go. Phil Murray marked by Wooten. Karlinski puts it to where only Murray can get it. No problem for Phil Murray. He runs that down easily. Sakai takes the lead 1-0. So Sakai offense feeling very confident in that first point. Going to the deep game, of course, everyone likes to talk about how Chain Lightning loves the long ball. Starting out on O. Starting out on Chains O, we have Nick Lance, Sammy CK, Jared Inselman. I think that's Jay Clark. Jay Clark, Greg Swanson, Dylan Tennell, and Mark Poole. I'm gonna look at Nick Lance and Greg Swanson will be doing a lot of the handling. Dylan Tennell will also be doing a lot of throws, mostly the deep shots. Be looking for Sammy CK streaking deep, also Jay Clark. Reed Koss set the pull for Sakai. That was gonna start out in play. Fielded by Swanson, up to Tunnell. Sakai in a junk look. Clark in the middle of the field, goes up to Lance. CK. Ooh, Reed Koss looked like he got, a, got his toe on that for a foot block. Still finds intended receiver Mark Poole. And Chain Lightning against that zone look looks very confident with their throws. Former Sockeye player 
Sammy CK getting the assist. And two quick points to start this game. Sockeye didn't really challenge uh, Chain's offense on that one, didn't really slow him down. No player had the disc in their hands for longer than four seconds. They were able to move it quickly. And then when Sockeye tried to transition to man, they were just a step behind. Almost a deep from Reed Koss. Active on the mark, gets his foot up there. But it blades, the wind pushes it downfield just enough for Mark Poole to score Chain's first point of the game. Now Sockeye's O-line, Holt, Karlinski, Murray, Wallace, Titcomb, Kosednar, and Caldwell. Caldwell, his famous Mohawk, been on the team a number of years. Jason Simpson, another veteran player set to pull for Chain Lightning. He's been at this club tournament a long time. Simpson has actually been with Chain as long as it's been around. 14 years. Sockeye with the disc. Karlinski in the center of the field. Caldwell streaking deep. Gets it to Murray. Murray takes the dump to Kasednar. Murray. Karlinski is up line. Karlinski setting it out in front of Chris Kasednar. And Chris Kasednar gets on the board, putting Sakai up two to one. Lots of confidence here from Sakai. They're not really slowing down with their throws. They got a little stagnant there with Murray in the end in the middle of the field after that first cut, but then he looked to his dump with Karlinski. Karlinski, his second completed huck, second assist of the game. So Sednar with a goal. I think the fish are bringing their A game here. Not showing any signs of a slow start for Sub-Zero. Field position game that can really wear you out mentally when you just have to punt and you're always told to don't turn it over, don't turn it over, but when it's so windy, you almost have to turn it over because you have to get it down the field and it's very difficult to move it the whole 70 yards, especially if you're going into the wind. A line for chain, doesn't change at all. We have Inselman, Tunnell, Lance, Swanson, Clark, Poole. Excuse me, it does change. There's Asa Wilson, one of the fastest men in all of Ultimate. Asa out of UC Santa Barbara. Reed Koss with the pull. Inselman centers to Swanson. Middle of the field marked by Simon Montague. Swanson fires it over to Inselman. Inselman putting it deep to Wilson. Reed Koss is there, but can't close the ground. Inselman, a pinpoint throw to the very, very fast Asa Wilson. Going to be seeing him streak a lot this game. Inselman's really been a bright spot for Chain this year. I believe it's his first year on the team. Yeah, he's really adding a lot to their handler side. I think it allows players like Nick Lance to be able to push up field and be kind of that three spot where they're a cutter, but they're still dangerous with their throws. Same with Dylan Tunnell, another big player where if he can get upfield and come back to the disc from a cutter position, he's very dangerous with the long throw, with a lot of space in front of him. And both teams' offenses looking very smooth. No turnovers so far in this game. D-line for Chain, we have Spear, Frank Wooten, Robert Runner, Elliot Erickson, David Berendez, Nick Lance, and Julian Dahl. Nick Lance set to pull for Chain. The 2012 Callahan Award winner. Two-year player on the Next Gen Tour. Pulls it inside out. Sednar takes it down. Over the Karlinski marked by Spear. Wallace cutting in the lane. Now Cast, casting with it. 
Fires up field to Murray. Karlinski wide open deep. Caldwell throws it to him. Karlinski had to his stats, two assists, one goal. Sockeye takes the lead, 3-2. A near D there from Spear. Yeah, Spear was guarding Karlinski. As Karlinski was going up line, Spear had his back to the disc, but it flew right by him. He tried to make a bid. And Karlinski was able to run down the field free of any defenders. It's one of those gambles you take when you're on defense. You so close on a D, your defender streaking deep. Right here we can see, ah, just so close. And, but then when you lay out, Karlinski's still going deep. And he's open by 30 yards, nobody marked. Gives up the goal. D-line for Sockeye. Reed Koss, Eddie Feely, Sam Harkness, Tyler Kinley, Joe Sefton, Simon Montague, and Frank Barich. The chain offensive side, we have Mark Poole, Greg Swanson, Nick Lance, Sam TK, Jared Enzelman, Dylan Tunnell, and Asa Wilson. Greg Swanson fielding the disc. Centers to Enzelman. Sakai in his zone look. No problem as CK gets to Wilson on the sideline. Back to Tunnell. Sakai still in a junk look. It seems they are man on the handlers as Swanson has the disc. Near the flick sideline, centers it to Lance. Swings it all the way around to Enselman. Enselman finds Wilson on the sideline, goes up line on the continuation. He's just outside the goal line. And reaches past a diving Tyler Kinley to find Dylan Tunnell for the goal, ties it at three. Kinley's a little undermatched there, Enselman. Has about six inches on his reach. He was able to just put it out past the diving Kinley to find Dylan Tunnell for the goal. Very clean game early in this game. Six points, zero turns. Yeah, but you got to hand it to Sakai's defense. That was the longest time an offense had been on the field so far. Their junk look was really slowing down that quick moving long ball offense that Chain likes. It was some weird mix between end zone. So a I think poachy man of some sort. Mm -hmm. You poach the lanes, head on a swivel, lots of communication. Sidelines talking to you a lot. You got one going deep. I got you under. Lots of switches. D line here for Chain. Will Locky. Sam Gaynor. Frank Wooten, Andrew Hollingsworth, David Brendes, Nikki Spiva, Monforti, and Monfrito. Monforti, excuse me. Nikki Spiva, normally number 36, wearing number 10. Tyler Conjure's number. Tyler Conjure is injured. It's a hamstring injury. So Sakai with the disc. Castine with it in the middle of the field. Well, marked by Nikki Spiva. These guys are running hard. Let's watch the matchup of Spencer Wallace and Will Lockey. There's the first turn in the game. Nate Castine was a little too far for Titcom. Now Frito with it, marked by Karlinski. Find Spiva. Spiva, not wasting any time, puts it up to Sam Gaynor. Gaynor oh, brings ah. it down over Mike Caldwell. Goes up left handed. Great grab by Sam Gaynor and huge play for Chain. Putting them up a break, taking advantage of the first turn of the game. That's what Chain wants. They want to push the disc deep. They believe they have the athletes to hang with anybody. There's Nikki Spiva. 
Stands out on his pivot. Blades comes down, but Sam Gaynor just comes down with it. You can see Caldwell's a little frustrated. That throw almost came out a little wobbly. Caldwell right there. Can't bring it down. Gainer's fired up. Chain gets the first break of the game. They take the lead 4-3. Yeah, if you were watching the last round stream, you saw the wind really pick up in the middle of that game. It was affecting everybody's throws out here on the field. In this round, it seems to be a lot more calm. Much calmer, resulting in a lot faster paced game. We've only gone 13 minutes into this game and we already have seven points. The last game, it took us about an hour to get seven points. O-line for the Fish. Sednar, Murray, Caldwell, Karlinski, Titcomb, Holt, and Rifkin. Holt brings it down, centers to Karlinski. Moves it over to Sednar, over to Holt. Holt puts a low throw to Phil Murray. Throws it right to him instead of leading him. Murray dumps to Rifkin, Rifkin around to Titcomb. Who scores, catches it past the diving Elliot Erickson. Elliot Erickson, a player from Team USA. I believe he plays at George, Georgia Southern. He played at no, University of Georgia. University of Georgia? Yep. Erickson. Uh huh. He's going to be a junior in college. He has a lot of respect on this Chain Lightning team on the D line. He seems short, but he is quick and very explosive. He was held out of the college season because of a hamstring injury early in the season. I can remember on the Next Gen Tour, when Next Gen took on Chain, throwing up to Tyler DiGirolamo, who was skying everybody all tour long. And Elliot Erickson boxed him out, held position, and beat DiGirolamo to the disc, and then ended up scoring on DiGirolamo that same point. So he may be 5'5", five, 5'6", five, five, but he's definitely a deep threat. D-line for Sockeye, Casting, Feely, Montague, Barich, Harkness, Koss, and Sewell. Outside in pull from Reed Koss. Hitzelman takes it down, centers to break Swanson. Swanson throws to Wilson, casting almost with the D. And then BJ Joe Sefton gets the big layout block. Reed Koss not wasting any time, throwing the inside out flick to Frank Barich. Sockeye respond with a break of their own after Chain gets the first one. Chain breaks and Sockeye scores. And Sockeye breaks, brings the game back to serve. Sockeye, a team that always feeds off the emotion of their sidelines, the happiness of their team. If they're having fun, then they're definitely winning. Yeah, that was a great defensive play by Sefton. Sockeye was throwing that switchy man junk and just trying to go upfield. Normally, if it was a man, like a man force, a very wide open Dylan Snell on the sideline, but with that junk, you never know who's gonna sneak his way into the, into the throw. We have no subs on the D-line for Sockeye. O-line for Chain, it's Poole, Lance, Swanson, Sammy CK, Tanell, Inselman, and Wilson. That yeah. just rolls out of bounds, and Inselman will take it on the sideline, but an offsides is called, Offside called. on Seattle Sockeye. So Reed Koss will get a second chance at that pull. 
I think he definitely wants to do that one over. In ultimate, you get two offsides in a game before you are punished with a yardage penalty. That'll be Seattle Sockeye's first offsides. So they will simply have to re-pull the disc. Cost looked like he was trying to roll that one. Elects for the big floater and this time looks a lot better. Plenty of space. Sockeye defense is already set up when the disc comes down. Comes down right on the brick. So on. Tanel going up to Swanson as Swanson crashed the cup. Nate oh. Castine gets a hand on it, but Swanson calling a foul or a strip. That's pretty close. I don't think you could tell from oh, our angle, oh, observer oh. rules, it was a foul at Swanson's yes, disc. Sakai looking like they're in a more traditional zone with a three-man cup. Chain not wasting any time. Tanel on the sideline and trying to go all the way across the field to Mark Poole. Skip Sewell is there. Reed Koss picks up. Asa Wilson fouling Reed Koss on the mark. Skip was fired up after that D. He streaked down the field. He's now 50 yards deep of the disc. Seattle Sockeye, a chance to get a second break and to extend their lead to two. Sefton with the disc. Gets it inside to Koss. Sewell. Unmarked now. Harkness on the sideline. Centers to Montague, quick pass to Castine. Montague always creative with his throws. And that's gonna be a travel called on Joe Sefton. No, excuse me, the disc is gonna stay, so I believe that's a pick called. Castine with the disc, Sam CK to set the mark. Castine on the sideline. Gets it to Sefton. Continuing up that backside sideline. Oh, Nick Lance with a big layout D on Barrich's throw, but then Barrich lays out and catches his own throw. You don't see that every day. Barrich realizing the importance. We'll see this play again, Nick Lance coming up from behind the disc. Barrage doesn't see it, but great heads up play to stick with it, get possession of the disc, and then he's gonna call a timeout, really wanting to punch in this break for Sockeye. This is a chance to put them up a break in the game. Give a chance to have them take the lead 6-4. So far, it's been a great game. The defense has picked up a little bit after our first break, you know. We're two breaks in. Still, I think those two breaks have only come off of two turnovers. Mm -hmm. Defensive possession has been huge in this game. Looks like Sockeye setting up in a vertical stack. Montague is gonna be back. Barrich is marked by Tanell. Montague is dumped, marked by Nick Lance. Sefton at the front of the stack, marked by Captain Mark Poole. Skips hanging out in the back. Barrett looking for Montague. Finds Castine with the quick throw. Barrett finds Reed Koss. The fish got their nets out. They catch a break. Sockeye take the lead, 6-4. A lot of quick movement from the throwers. Taking short passes. And chain defense doesn't know where to set up. You can see when Barrich 
throws that throw to casting. He's already cutting up line. And Dylan Tunnell, his defender, kind of slows up and doesn't stay with him. He thinks that Barrich isn't going to clear out very fast, so he lets, lets off the gas. And that allows Barrich to gain some space. Which then when he receives the pass back from Castine, he's left with he's left unmarked. It's much easier to find an open cutter when you're unmarked than it is with a mark. O-line for Chain, it's Frank Wooten, Robert Runner, Munforti, Spiva, Julian Dahl, Nick Lance, and Andrew Hollingsworth. Lance with it. Sockeyes in a zone set. Runner quick move into 40. Four-man cup. Scuba fake. Frank Wooten is trailing deep. No one really sees him. Nick Lance with a lazy scuba. Kind of tough to pull that off in the wind. Results in a turnover. Montague over to Castine. Koss back to Castine. Castine quick moving in the middle. Joe Septon finds Frank Barrick. That's the fast paced offense that Sakai likes. Sakai takes the lead 7 4. That's a really tough throw in this wind. That 20 yard scuba over. No, nope. if there's no wind out here, that is Nick Lance's patented throw. He throws this over the top. You can see it flutters around. Hollingsworth almost catches it, trailing edge. Has to roll over on his back, then casting inside break. Sockeye throwing very confidently here. They're hitting their spots. Another runner almost with the D. Chain Lightning is going to take a break to settle themselves down to settle themselves down we're also going to take a quick break we'll be back with you with the conclusion of the first half welcome back to sarasota the club championships for usa ultimate still the last game of pool play seattle sockeye taking on chain lightning and the winner of this game will go on to the power pools that guarantees at least pre-quarters in the championship bracket. Sockeye right now working on a four-point run. Chain was able to break Sockeye for the first break of the game. Sockeye responded with an O point and then went on a three-point break run themselves. It was Reed Koss with the pull. Low outside in. Jared Inselman. Over to Swanson, Tunnell with it in the middle. Sakai again in the zone. Swanson to Inselman. Inselman fires it to number 19, Mark Poole. That's his second goal of the game. And then Inselman's second assist, both coming on forehand hucks. Nice find in that zone as Mark Poole gets past the last back. Sneaks to the live side. If you have one defender to beat, that makes it pretty easy for the thrower. We'd like to take a moment again to thank our sponsors, Elemental Technologies, for encoding this video today and all of the videos from the Next Gen Network. And as a reminder, if you've been watching the games earlier, after this first half, we are going to, you're going to have to switch this streams on your YouTube page. The second half will be on a separate page. So make sure you switch over to there when you come back to see the conclusion of this game. D-line for Chain, Erickson, Lou, Spear, Dahl, Frank Wooten, Spiva, Inselman, 
Chain Lightning defense facing a must-break situation. Osaka is going to take this game into half. Karlinski takes it down, centers to Kosednar. That's Santa Cruz to Carlton. Kosednar, lefty backhand to Holt. Marked by Inselman. Chain staying in a man set. Rifkin with it. Moves it to Murray. To Rifkin. Marked by Wooten. Puts it up to Spencer Wallace. Spencer Wallace goes up and catches it over the younger Elliot Erickson. Spencer Wallace out of the University of Oregon. Sockeye takes half, 8-5. A couple chances there to get a deep. Chain could not capitalize. Yeah, unfortunate. Sockeye's offense didn't look as smooth as they had earlier this game, as you had said. But they're still able to find Spencer Wallace on the deep look. A good read, a very explosive receiver. And Sakai looking very smooth so far in this first half. So we're gonna go into halftime, but please stick around for an interview, interview with USA Ultimate's Will Deaver coming up right after some highlights. Welcome back to second half action between Seattle Sockeye and Atlanta's Chain, the 2012 U USA Ultimate Club Championships here in Sarasota, Florida. Sockeye took half 8-5, winner of this game will move on to the power pools, loser will move down to the lower pools. Kinley with the opening pull for Sockeye. Swanson has it in the middle of the field. He gets it to Enzelman on the sideline, and Enzelman with that flick huck to a streaking Jay Clark. And Jay Clark, no problem running it down. Look at that handlebar mustache. Well, that's that is a thing of beauty. Almost as pretty as Enzelman's throw. Enzelman again, we see him throwing down that flick sideline. Leading Jay Clark, Jay Clark and Enzelman, both first year players on the team. Jay Clark from Georgia Tech, teammates with Nick Lance as they led Georgia Tech to their first college championships. Some great facts from the first half. As we were talking about how important it is for possession for both of these two teams and what we see on our stat list is that the defensive lines, when they get the disc, have not turned it over. Yeah, we have four offensive turnovers for the offensive line, three coming from Chain, one coming from Seattle Sockeye, and zero coming from the D-line. Another interesting fact, Seattle Sockeye has 23 throws Chain Lightning has 42. Sockeye, always known for their quick movement. They're scoring very efficiently here. Only 23 throws and eight goals. That's about a goal every three throws, just under. Now Karlinski with it in the middle, finds Murray. Murray dumps to Holt. Holt to Tickham. Tickham up the line to Kosednar. Sednar calls a foul. It's marked by Michael Spear. Sednar puts the flick. Danny Karlinski 
little too far. Sails just out the back. That would have been Karlinski's second goal of the game. That's a tough throw by Kasednar. Not technically, but for the receiver and the space that he's trying to put it in. He's throwing that right down the line and coming off that foul. It seemed like he had a little bit of adrenaline going for him. Wow. Great That's grab by Michael Spear in the middle of the field. Shoulder high pancake layout. Elliot Erickson gives the disc right back to Sakai with short field. Phil Murray scores the goal in the end zone. The offense able to get the disc back and score after we were just talking about defensive possessions. Elliot Erickson throws that one right back to the Sakai team. Big chest high layout from Andrew Hollingsworth, excuse me, Michael Spear, and then Erickson, a little bit of a miscommunication there with Julian Dahl. Thought Dahl was cutting up line, or thought Dahl was cutting backfield. Dahl decided he was cutting up line. Just a bit of hesitation. Erickson couldn't find Dahl. You wonder if it's, as we were talking about before the game, Chain saying that they really haven't played together with all of these guys, so they really haven't gotten the reps together. So you're probably going to see that happen once or twice in these early games, these Thursday games. It's actually very interesting about that point, Jackson, is that looking at our League Vine stats, they're counting points played, and Nick Lance actually has the most points played for the Chain Lightning team as a player who's important on both the offensive and the defensive line. Simon Montague with the pull. Gets it just past midfield. Asa Wilson streaking deep. Swanson doesn't hit him. Finds Jay Clark. Now Tunnell with it. On the sidelines, Tunnell dumps to Swanson in the middle of the field. Around to Inselman. Inselman looking for the end zone, looking downfield. Flicks to Jay Clark. Just at the brick, marked by Maddie Zemmel. And Inselman with the backhand fake, marked by Joe Sefton. Inselman to CK. CK to Inselman. Backfield, Inselman points. And can't connect. From our vantage point, it looked like Asa Wilson had a beat on that. Looked like he was gonna come down with it. He points, Wilson goes. Wilson's there. He just doesn't read it. A tough throw to read. Especially and in this wind. Yeah. That, that was a downwind throw, so it probably sailed a little bit further than what Wilson was thinking. And Maddie Zemmel leans back and looks for Tim Sliva. Sliva. He can't read it, so Dylan Tunnell picks up. Sam CK, Swanson with the drop. First drop we've seen this game. Sakai now has a short field to work with. Looking for a chance to break, take the lead 10-6. Sefton picks up, marked by Clark. Inside break, goes right through Maddie Zemmel's hands. Tunnell picks up, finds CK, swings it over to the sideline. CK to Swanson, middle of the field to Wilson. Maddie Zemmel, nearly an amazing D. Inselman unmarked with it in the middle of the field. Inselman back with it. Montague trailing Inselman. Tunnell marked by Sefton. Inselman, Inselman backhand to X and Titcomb. 
Sam CK. Dumped to Swanson. Swanson has nothing, then throws around to Asa Wilson. Wilson's second turn of the point. Wow, a lot of unforced errors coming from both sides. That's two drops for Chain this point, one for Sakai. Feely with it on the sideline to Montague. Big layout from Jay Clark. Montague holsters. Feely barrel rolls in midair. Saves possession. Exxon Titcomb throws it just past the diving Inselman. Sefton with it on the sideline, marked by Poole. Sliva. The, what was that? Oh my. Tim Sliva pivots to his right side and throws a backhand, has a forehand pivot, throws a backhand, and Eddie Feely goes up, toes the line. That was fun to watch. Air bounce around into the wind. Feely goes up, toes the line, and then decides to tumble. I don't know if he needed to do that. He was about four feet in bounds, but it still looked pretty cool. And Chain Lightning takes a timeout. Their first timeout of the second half after a long point of a lot of mental errors. They really need to regroup themselves. There were a lot of dives on that point. Bodies flying everywhere. Yeah, both teams were picking up the intensity on defense, really putting their bodies on the line. There's Matty Samuel almost to D. Matty Feely barrel roll grab. Chain trying to regroup. Trying to focus. This game is huge as far as as the tournament goes, whoever loses this game will have to play an extra game and win that game. They basically have to win out if they lose this game to continue playing at Nationals. They will go down into either Pool G or H, which are the two pools with the lower seeds. And then the winner, the first and second place, both of those pools will have a play-in to get to quarters. They will have to play the last place team in pools E and F. Sakai looking to extend their lead. They lead 10-6 right now. Reed Koss with a pull. Nick Lance takes it down. Centers to Inselman. Back to Lance. To Inselman. Marked by Duncan Lynn. First year player on Sakai. Out of UW. Greg Swanson with it on the sidelines. Excuse me, in the middle of the field. Double zero, Ben Spear with it. Sam Gaynor marked by Harkness. Set their own brick to Lance. Lance with the slow wind up, puts it to Ben Spear. Reed Cost gets up and D's it. Seattle Sockeye defense still without a turnover. We saw that long point was. I don't. I don't know. No, if Koss deed it. What was that? I, I was correcting myself. I think that long point that we just saw was Seattle on defense. Oh right, because. Maddie Zimmel was him. Maddie had two turns that point. Jacob Speedle with it on the sideline. Sam Harkness dumps to Kinley right at midfield. Back to Harkness. Right at center. 
Reed Koss falls down. I think he's calling something. Foul called. Yes, foul called. Harkness to Barrick. Catches it past a diving Inselman. Barrick's throw's not gonna come back. Chain's gonna get the disc just past the brick on the sidelines as the disc sails out of bounds. Dylan Tunnell will have possession marked by Reed Koss. Chain Lightning needing to score this. Don't want to dig themselves in a deeper hole. Tunnell to Lance, marked by Lynn. Spear falls forward and catches it. In the backhand, Speedle runs through Swanson and gets the D, no dive necessary. Kinley to Harkness to Lynn. Back to Harkness. Around Joe Sefton, around to Joe Sefton. This goes back on a travel call. Sam Gaynor marking Sam Harkness. Travel is upheld. Oh, nearly came back. It's really unfortunate that he didn't catch that because we would have had a great situation of even with the catch, it wouldn't have counted since Frank Devin Barrett jumped from out of bounds. But now Chain Lightning, offense back with possession. Oh, Nick Lance, so close. Great job by Lance running that down just out of his reach. Greg Swanson with a huck, switching the field. Koss with it, marked by Tunnell. Spell count getting higher. Koss swings to Sefton. believe that is a contested stall. Observer of rules. It was not a stall. So it goes to Sefton in the middle, marked by Gaynor. Sefton to Harkness, up the line to Harkness. Gaynor calls travel on Sefton. Kinley deep downfield marked by Sam CK. Sefton up line to Harkness. Trying to jam it up that sideline. Sakai loves their handler movement. Sefton was tripped up by Gaynor. No contest. Off Tyler Kinley's hands. Greg Swanson picks up, marked by Harkness. Around to Nick Lance. Nick Lance with low inside out backhand. Inselman inside out to Sam CK. That stops the chain bleeding. Chain scores the offensive point. They trail Sockeye 10 7. That point really showed a huge difference in the first half of this game compared to the second. Not only with a lot more turnovers from both sides, but we're also seeing a lot more calls. Some travel calls and contested stalls and whatnot. 
Yeah, the pace of the game is really slowed down. Exactly. We got, the, we got the first half done in about 30 minutes. This is the result of Chain Lightning not wanting to give up yet. I think this slow style of play favors Chain. Sakai just always wants to go, 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 go. Quick movement. They don't want to hold the disc for longer than two seconds if they don't have to. They'll always hit the open guy. It seems like their run of four in a row happened in about four minutes. No line for Sakai, Murray, Castine. Holt, Caldwell, Karlinski, Vero Titcomb, and Kosednar. There's Julian Dahl with the outside in pull. Just five yards outside the back line. Holt, Karlinski on the goal line, up the line to Kosednar. Setting our big forehand fake to Caldwell. Caldwell inside backhand. Sakai really, really working it up that break side sideline. They're not getting a lot of yards, but it's always to the break side of the field, meaning the receiver downfield has the advantage. If the thrower can get it past the mark as they're trying to take away half the field, but so far being unsuccessful. One more break throw from Nate Castine. Castine rifles a 34 yard inside out backhand to Adam Holt. I think they threw five inside out backhands in a row on that point. Just marching it up the break side. Chain wants to win this game. They can't allow breaks like that to happen. They got to hold the live side. Chain has only broke Sakai one time this game, and it came at 3-3. The last time that Chain broke Sakai, Sakai went on a 4-0 run. O-line for Chain, Inselman, Tunnell, Clark, Lance, Swanson, Poole, and Wilson. D-line for Sockeye, Castine, Sefton, Barich, Montague, Harkness, Koss, and Sewell. Koss with the pull. Right in the back end zone. Inselman thought it was going to go out. It doesn't. Sakai in a zone look. Lance with it, marked by Barrick. Lance breaks inside to Lance. Lance to Swanson. Swanson to Lance. Lance upfield to Tunnell. Lance inside. Lance over on the sidelines to Tunnell. Chain being patient. Sockeye forcing Chain into a lot of throws. Greg Swanson with it now. It's Barrick, Montague, Murray, and Castine. Very tall cup, four man cup. Swanson trapped on the sideline. Swanson calls foul. No contest. It's going to come in on zero. See Sakai really trying to take away the field of vision of Swanson. Keeps their arms up. Casting cheats over to the inside. They find Tanel now Clark with it just outside the end zone. 
Clark to Swanson. Still in their four-man cup. Lance to Clark. Clark to Lance. Lance to Clark. Just outside the end zone. Sockeye still in their zone. Now with Swanson, Swanson finds Tanell for a goal hammer over the top. It's a big point for Chain. Don't want to give up any more breaks. They still trail by three. I wonder if it's about time that Chain starts pressing a little, starts bringing some of their O-line players, their more consistent players, like Dylan Tanell, uh, Nick Lance over to the D-line. Well, that's usually a good move when the defense is getting the disc, but they're not converting. But Sakai has just kept possession on their offense. Chain Lightning really just unable to force any turns. It looks like Sakai's offense can do what they want at will, and Sakai's defense is just very much directing where they want the Chain Lightning offense to go. Yeah, a lot of the articles uh, that were written about Sockeye and why they have a shot at winning the title is because they're really ahead strategically, especially in their offense. They really have their timing down better than anyone. They know where each other are on the field. They play a lot of mini, which forces you to put it in really tight, small spaces. So it's very difficult to generate turnovers, especially when a team is practicing on a smaller field and then they're allowed all this space to throw it in. Nick Lance with the outside in pull. It rides the win. Karlinski, Karlinski to Holt. Marked by Russell Snow, first time we see him on today. Holt to Karlinski, back to Holt, Holt. An offensive that mistake from Sakai. Exactly what Chain needs if they want to come back in this game. Nick Lance picked up. He's marked by Caldwell. Lance around to Lou. Goes up. Very awkward jump and landing. But it results but in it a goal works. and a break. That's exactly what Chain needs. Everything seemed to be working for Chain that game. Holt just tried to pancake and didn't have his hands on top, so they flipped around and the disc hit the ground. And Lou goes up off his right foot and catches it with his right hand, which is probably why he came down awkwardly and is shaking his foot there. Just feels really weird to land like that. Chain's defense, though, give partial credit to the pole. A good pull can really do a lot for your defense. Sakai fielding that one well in the back of their end zone and their D-line had hustled down and they were all set up when that first throw was coming off. It's that kind of attitude switch that this D-line has to make if they're really gonna pull themselves back in this game. They can't rely on more mistakes from Sakai. That was the first point Excuse me, that was the second point that Sakai has given Chain a turn, given them an opportunity to break them. Chain's still yet to generate Ds. There's Nikki Spiva with a pull. Spencer Wallace brings it down, Chain's down on the pull. Karlinski with it on the side, marked by Byron Liu. Must not be too shaken up after that awkward landing. I really like this matchup of Jason Simpson and Moses Rifkin. I'm sure these two guys two have veterans. marked up against each other many times here in Sarasota. Many times. Now Murray with it in the middle. Karlinski to Castine to Caldwell. Caldwell fakes the hammer over the top. Goes to Murray on the sidelines about 15 yards outside the end zone. Dumps to Kosednar. Kosednar looking for a swing around to the other side. Sees Karlinski. Back to Kosednar. 
Kosednar to Karlinski. They're losing ground now, about 25 yards outside the end zone. Kar Kosednar marked by Monforti. Now Karlinski up the line, inside throw to Spencer Wallace. And Spencer Wallace that bottles I, it. There's no ruling on the field. Now the observer rules out of bounds. It bounced off of Spencer Wallace's hand. He did have a foot down, but then when it was fluttering in the air, he had to catch it, and as he caught it, he brought his back foot up. Oh, I don't, I, I don't think that was the right call of the observer. I think he had his foot down. You can see right there, it stopped. But ruling on the field stands. It was a turnover. Sockeye's gonna need to get a D if they want that goal. Now Spear over to Robert Runner. Jason Simpson marked by Rifkin, Topher's favorite matchup. Simpson goes around. Not high enough for Nick Lance. It's the second time they've overthrown Lance going deep. Wind's starting to pick up here. Kosednar in the middle of the field. Up the line to Kosednar. Kosednar puts it to Rifkin. Rifkin and Simpson. And Rifkin prevails. Chain not able to capitalize on the obs observer's ruling. Just not quite clicking. They had the disc, they just needed to be a little patient. Although patience is really not something that Chain has made one of their their main strategies. Always been a team to prefer the deep shot over working it. The turnover by Simpson was unfortunate, but I really like the way that Chain Lightning's defense came out at that point. They were looking a lot stronger on their downfield matchups. They forced a lot of passes that Sakai's offense hadn't really had to do up to this point. The turnover, a result of a bit of wind kind of catching the underside of that disc. Sakai leads 12-9. They are pulling to chain. Again, the winner of this game will move on to the power pool. They will have a much easier road to bracket play. Other pools today, Revolver. Pool B has gone to seed. Revolver, or excuse me. Ring upset machine, so Ring takes the second seed out of the B pool. It goes Revolver, Ring, Machine, Madison Club. Back to the game, Mark Pool with it on the sideline. Marked by Ali Lennon to Jay Clark. Over to Sammy CK. Now Tanell with it, 25 yards out. Marked by Spiegel. Swanson marked by Zemmel. Dumps to Tunnell in the middle of the field. Tunnell rifles a flick to Inselman. That, <laughs> that is one accurate throw right there. Inselman finally being on the receiving end of one of those goals. The forehand huck. Chain Lightning still within two late in this game. Not a bad position for them to be in. Again, it's very reliant on their defense to bring intensity and slow down that Sakai offense. This break that Chain is trying to get, this is the big one. They need it right now. It'll be going upwind and then the next point They'll, if they do get the break, then they'll be coming downwind. It's much easier to get a turn or generate a turn or take a turn or take the disc from chain or from Sakai. D-line for chain. Andrew Hollingsworth, Michael Spear, Michael Aronson, Elliot Erickson, Russell Snow, Frank Wooten, and Joel Wooten. Have not seen this combination of players on the field yet today. Offensive line for Sakai, 
Phil Murray, Mike Caldwell. From here, that looks like Exton Titcomb. I think it's, I believe it's Farrow. Farrow Titcomb. They all look the same, all those All Titcombs. the Titcombs. All those five the ultimate five folk. Five siblings. There's also Adam Holtz, Spencer Wallace, Carlin, Danny Karlinski, Chris Kasednar. And Danny Karlinski getting the travel called as he was going to go for the centering pass. Holt to Kosednar. Things getting a little stagnant. Swung over to, to Wallace. Chain throwing a bit of a poach look on their of their own. They're really they're putting Greg's or excuse me, Michael Frank. Aronson. That's Frank on the mark. Yeah, Michael Aronson on the mark, and then Frank Wooten hanging out deep. He's kind of patrolling the back. There's Joel Wooten, his brother, on the sideline. And on the other sideline is Andrew Hollingsworth. Push pass over the top, Karlinski. That is a difficult catch. Low backhand to Phil Murray. Chain thinks it was ruled down. A little stoppage of play. Observer rules it was up. This will be in Murray's hands. Unfortunate for Chain, if they had let play continue, they would have had the disc. But because there was a call, it stops at Phil Murray's catch. Now Kosednar with it on the sidelines. High release lefty backhand, Mike Caldwell. High release lefty to high release lefty, Danny Karlinski, second goal of the game. That is a veteran throw right there. I don't think Caldwell's first year on Sockeye, he would have been throwing that. I don't but think even in his fifth year he would have been throwing <laughs> that. The lefty backhands are a very new throw. Especially in this wind, and it was inside out. That was perfect. Sockeye leads 13-10, looking to take a spot in a power pool, make their road easier to bracket play. Chain looking to dig themselves out of a hole. They do not want to fall to the lower pools. As we've been over, it is much harder to come back from being down the lower pools then win the play-in. Tyler Kinley with a pull. Inselman, re no, Lance receives, centers to Swanson. Sakai in a man set. Lance with it, Lance fakes the big forehand. The Tunnel, Eddie Feely, almost the layout. D, wide open Inselman, elects to not throw it. The disc is clearly taco. The players are trying to fix it as they're being stalled. Tunnel rips a flick. Tim Sleva, phantom D, didn't quite D it, but looked like he was going to. Yeah, that was something where, because of the edge being down into the wind coming towards it, it really forced it into the ground instead of as I'm sure Dylan Tunnell was intending to lead Asa Wilson into the end zone. That disc falls short to the defensive advantage and we see Chain Lightning really trying to keep Sakai down on that backhand sideline as the wind is picked up in this point. Feely with a smooth throw to Exton Titcomb, who puts it up to Spidal. Spidal boxes out Asa Wilson, holds position. The wind knocks it down and puts it right in front of Speedle's face. 
Sakai gets a break. They take the lead 14-10 on the cusp of getting that spot in the power pool. It's not over yet, but it's looking a little grim for Chain. The other matchup in Pool C, GOAT taking on Sub-Zero. GOAT is winning that game very easily, 10-4. to four. GOAT's only loss coming to Sakai in that very, very windy second game of the pool. A game that really could have gone to anyone. Given a few different lucky bounces or hits of the wind. So GOAT in Pool D, double wide held seed. Bravo did as well. Truck Stop and Pony did. So everyone held seed. How about that? In Pool A, Rhino is up on Boost Mobile, 9-5, Ironside. Commanding lead 13 6 over Furious George. Back here, Chain and Sakai. Inselman takes down the pull just outside the end zone. Swanson swings it over to Clark. Back to Swanson, marked by Feely. Physical mark. Breaks around to Lance. Next gen on next gen, marked by Simon Montague. Sammy CK dumps to Lance. Lance to pool across the field. Upfield to Inselman. Inselman throwing that flick. That was the first time he threw the flick going in that direction, and the wind knocked it down. So Inselman does not remain perfect on his forehand hucks for this game. Feely picks up for Sakai. Oh! Great play by Sam CK to block the huck coming from Reed Koss. And Jay Clark lays out from the throw from Jared Enzelman. There's discussion on the field. I don't know what it could be about. Tyler Kenley might be calling a travel, but what a play by Sam CK to keep his chain lightning team alive. That might be one of those instances where knowing the other team and their habits really came into play. Sam CK on Sakai for a long, long time. Probably knows some of Reed Koss's tendencies like throwing the huck. Discussion still on the field. I'm unsure what the ruling is. I think it's a travel on Jared Enzelman's throw. So Enzelman will have possession of the disc. And Chain is just outside their goal line. Enzelman in the middle of the field to CK. and leads Enzelman up the line. Enzelman fired up, spiking the disc right in front of Kinley. And Chain Lightning still in this game. 14-11. We have talked about how it's very difficult for a team to come back from being in those lower pools. One team that did make quite the run was the 2004 Sockeye team. They ended up playing in a quarters play-in where they had lost to Pike. They didn't make it to the power pools. They had to play in that play-in. They beat double wide 15-9. The 
they beat Ring of Fire 15-13. Avenge their loss to Pike 15-13 in semis. And ended up beating Jam 16-15 on double game point. Was that so their first championship win? That was the first, that was the 2004. And the run of 2004, 2006, and 2007 championships from Sakai. Yes. So that sort of ignited the fire for Sakai, brought them onto the national scene. Really were a powerhouse for a long time. So the tournament isn't over for Chain if they lose this game. It can be done, Sakai's done it before. Of course, that team had incredible players. Chase Sparling Becker playing with Rhino. Karlinski with the backhand to Phil Murray. Looked like it hurt, but Murray's fine. I think that's going to be a strip call, but chain players might be arguing that it wasn't any of their team that caused the strip, or they're arguing that he dropped it. From that vantage point, it sort of looked like he dropped it. I mean, he had he had a good spot on the disc. Now oh, that looks like a foul. Looked like Joe Wooten came in and just hacked him on the arm. A lot of discussion on the field. Can I take another look at this play? Slow it down a bit. We'll let you at home make the call. Pretty clear to me that Joel Wooten fouled him. And Sakai takes the timeout just outside their goal line, wanting to set something up where they can do that. We would like to thank our sponsor, Elemental Technologies, for encoding all of the next-gen material you've seen. Without them, we would not be able to bring you this high quality of ultimate to your viewing pleasure right in your own home. Not to worry, folks. We will make that trip to Sarasota for you, and you can stay in the comfort of your living room. Both teams are set up. Phil Murray with the disc in the middle of the field. Can't get it as the front of the stack goes for the swing to Adam Holt. It catches the wind and Chain Lightning catches a break. Nick Lance is gonna pick it up. Switches the field to Frank Wooten. Hollingsworth. Hollingsworth putting it up to Joel Wooten. And Chain Lightning stays alive for one more point, 14 to 12 after the timeout call. Chain has, hasn't given up yet. They get their first, first break in a while. D-line for Chain, Locky, Lou, Erickson, Spiva, Simpson, Dahl, and Lance. O-line for Sockeye, Murray, Wallace, Vero, Tickham, Karlinski, 
Casting, Kosednar, and Moses Rifkin. Rifkin and Caldwell, the only two players left on the, the team that in 2004 did come back from the quarters playing. Jason Simpson's on the line. I really hope he's going to mark Moses Rifkin. I'm sure he will. He did last time, right? Although Rifkin did get the better of him. Spiva with the pull. Oh. Kosednar with it in the middle of the field. Marked by Simpson. Sorry, Topher. A round break to Phil Murray. Murray oh. to Wallace. Erickson almost gets the D. Casting to Karlinski. Murray trying to streak deep. Takes what Lockie gives him. Lockie with a big hack. Murray calls foul. No contest from Lockie. Rifkin, deepest cutter downfield. There's Casting up line. Casting puts it up to Karlinski, and Sockeye takes the win 15 12. Sockeye took the early, or was broken at 3 3 and then went on a four-point run to take the game. They really never looked back from there. Again, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Elemental Technologies, for encoding the game for you. Also like to thank our crew. Bird's Eye View is Aki Odera. Snake in the Grass, Brian Bedord. Tim Gilligan and the Crow's Nest. Director Vin Bowie, Instant Replay Specialist Kimber Coles. Executive Producer Kevin Minderhout. I'm Jackson Kelsey. He's Topher Davis. Join us tomorrow at 9.30 to catch some open power pool. Me and Topher will be here with you.